Hey, hi everyone. Hi Claire. Hi. <laughs> How things going though? They're going good. I'm excited for some drone phenotyping stuff today. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. So hi everyone. Welcome. We are starting a new uh, workshop today in our fried hands zone. And as traditionally, we're going to start with our presentation. But before of that, I want to invite here David Lebauer, which is going to be hosting the workshop with us today. Hi, David. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Uh, we always, I always forget to introduce. So I'm Felipe Matias. I'm working here at North Dakota State University. I'm Claire Gahagan. I'm working at Agriculture Canada. And I'm David LeBauer. I work at the University of Arizona. Awesome. Let me share my screen. Here we go. So uh, this year, uh, we are in our third season from this workshop series called Fried Hands On. Our main idea always it is try to uh, bring in new uh, material with plant phenotyping. And now this year we have this partnership with Drunk to Phenom Project. David is going to talk a little bit more about this. Our, our topic this season, it is principal protocols and pipelines for drone phenotyping, all right? And for those of you who aren't familiar, uh, Felipe, Anarita, and myself are Phenome Force. So we are a group that are working on connecting people and empowering early career researchers in phenomics. And we're trying to build a library of online resources in phenomics, starting with our YouTube channel and our Slack channel. And if you're interested in reaching out to us at all, our social media and contact information is in the video description here today. And we're here to provide different types of trainings for anyone who might want to learn a little bit more about phenomics. And uh, with Drone to Phenome, which Felipe and myself, uh, Jennifer Lackawick and Max Feldman and Adrian Silva, we are all pulling together a group who are interested in using UAVs and sharing protocols and computational pipelines so that we can all learn from one another as we develop this new field of phenotyping. So that's part of the motivation behind this series of principles, protocols, and pipelines for UAVs. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you, guys. Uh, and so as part of this uh, workshop series, uh, today we we are very happy to have Cheng Yong Zen with us. He's going to talk about how he has been working with uh, UAVs and plant phenotyping in Purdue University. And uh, so I would like to invite Cheyong to come and be part of our conversation. Hi there. You are mute. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Uh, how are you? We're doing great. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming. We are very excited to have you here. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. Perfect. So uh, he's going to talk about crop, uh, crop trait phenotyping in plant breeding programs using UAS and futures extraction pipeline. All right. So do you want to start uh, re, uh, sharing your screen? Yeah. And while you get that set up, I'll just mention that if you're watching and you're on the live stream, you have any questions, John Young is going to take a few breaks. So we'll address questions at that point. So make sure you put them in the chat and we'll do our best to get them answered. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So we're going to be right here. Let me know if you need anything. Okay. Okay. Uh, should I start? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, hey, uh, morning, uh, everyone. Uh, I'm Chong Yuan Zhang. Uh, I'm a uh, postdoc research. I'm working in Purdue. Uh, however, today I'm going to present uh, my research uh, when, when I'm studying and working in uh, Washington State University. So, so um, today I will talk about uh, the founding, uh, the finding uh, during uh, in Washington State. Today uh, I'm talking about the crop trait phenotyping in plant breeding program using UAS and feature extraction pine. 
So uh, here is the outline uh, of my presentation, uh, including the uh, four section, uh, crop trade in plant breeding, UAS-based remote sensing and case study, and a demo uh, overview, uh, uh, a pine-eye overview and demo. So the first part is about the uh, crop trade. So uh, Washington uh, State uh, have um, a couple, um, I think it's a lighting uh, breeding project. So it's a, a good place for uh, phenotyping study. So this, uh, the, um, so crop tree is an uh, important uh, breeding object objective. So and there are um, so selective uh, criteria for new uh, cultivar. For example, they have a uh, morphological, uh, physiological, and productive uh, crop tree, such as uh, uh, plant high, uh, disease resistance, seed size, yield, and flower intensities, uh, and so on. And in, in the last uh, couple. Uh, Years uh, genotyping have made uh, great progress and helping the plant breeding uh, to make progress. However, uh, the traditional um, uh, phenotyping is, is still uh, you know, left behind and it's still depending on labor and manually measurement. So it is still it becomes the bottleneck. So here is called for the hypo phenotyping to uh, facilitate the plant breeding. So one of the um, very popular uh, phenotype, uh, high level phenotyping platform is UAS. Um, it become very popular in recent years. So uh, because uh, there's um, some some advantage of the UA, uh, UAS based with no sensing, for example, uh, it's automatic and fast. Uh, you as uh, as you can see from the uh, figure on the right side. Um, you know, the um, data acquisition can be accomplished using the autopilot and uh, mission planner or other, other uh, related, uh, similar software. Another advantage is the high throughput and um, using UAS. Uh, UAS can cover a large area and provide uh, multiple trade, uh, crop trade. And it also can uh, evaluate uh, plant trade objectives uh, in an objective standard and quantitative uh, weight. It provide high spectrum, spatial, and temporal re uh, resolution data. So that's what uh, the reason behind it get very popular. So in, in uh, my, my uh, in the uh, in the in <coughs> in, uh, in the lab uh, of um, Washington State University, we use uh, two uh, different type of uh, UAS system, open source uh, UAS system, as well as uh, commercial uh, UAS system. So for, for the open open source UAS system, we use uh, API Eggbox and Mission Planner, as you can see from the figure. So uh, the, uh, uh, the advantage of the open source UAS system is um, is customi customizable, flexible, and it can mount multiple sensor and, uh, and trigger by the Mission Planner at, uh, simultaneously. As you can see from the uh, the figure, we we mount. Uh, Two to uh, sometimes we mount two to three camera or on the drone and trigger uh, just use one uh, mission panel. Uh, on the other hand, we also use the commercial uh, UAS system, uh, for example the DJI uh, Phantom 4 Pro, and also using the mission panel uh, software such as uh, Pix Body Capture. So uh, those commercial um, hardware and software are user friendly. Very robust. For example, the, um, for the DJI drone, we, uh, they equip with um, collision, uh, anti collection uh, sensor, so it's uh, easier and safer to find uh, the DJI drone. However, the, um, they, are really, uh, they are less uh, flexible, so for example, uh, it's very tricky and difficult to add a, a third, third party sensor on the DJI and trigger uh, with one uh, mission plan. So uh, in, in our study, we use we use a different type of sensor, for example, the, uh, the RGB camera, uh, multi-spectrum camera, thermal camera, uh, as you can see from the um, from the figure, uh, different kind of sensor. We, um, we're also using LiDAR, uh, but here the LiDAR we use is uh, a little bit big, so there, this LiDAR uh, is uh, providing ground truth uh, data. Um, we also have a hyper-spectrometer, uh, which is also using in ground sensing and provide uh, data as ground truth. So uh, here is more uh, details about those um, 
uh, sensor. Uh, if you're interested, uh, you can go over it. So uh, another section of my uh, presentation is about case study uh, using UAS, uh, UAS based remote sensing. Uh, but before it, uh, I, I will uh, pause here and see if uh, any question for me. You're good to keep going right now. There are no questions. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Okay, uh, in this section, I will talk about uh, using uh, uh, UAS uh, and sensor for uh, crop tree phenotyping. So um, here I including I include three case uh, in, uh, such as um, disease detection, for monitoring, and prime height uh, estimation. So. Um, <clears throat> S. Cucurta bright uh, is one of the disease that threatening the production of uh, chickpea. It can lead to yellow leaf, uh, aquatics, weed, bench, and stem, and ultimately uh, reduce the yield. Uh, traditionally, uh, chemical control is used to control the disease. However, it requires regular and entire field application of the chemical. So it, I mean, it not only uh, in, in introduce uh, environment issue and also increase the cost of uh, chemical and labor. So to control the disease precisely, uh, hyperfood phenotyping is one uh, of, of, uh, of the two. So it, it, uh, it provides a high accurate spatial and temporal and, uh, information, and it can uh, it allows farmer to rapidly and frequently scout the, uh, scout the farm. But before we use that, uh, we need to uh, validate uh, the UAS-based uh, remote sensing on disease detection. So uh, in this study, we evaluate the feasibility of monitoring s cucurbit fly disease uh, in chickpea using remote sensing technology. So we will evaluate the impact of uh, attitude and set, uh, the different kind of sensor on the um, efficiency of disease monitoring. So in this study, uh, um, so here I just give you a, a, a brief a summary of the uh, experiment. So uh, in this study, uh, we use a UAS, uh, our ATI Eggbox and uh, free sensor, uh, two multi-spectrum camera and one thermal camera to collect the uh, aerial data. And we also collect a, a visual weighting as a ground truth. After that, uh, we use um, the PyNi uh, we developed to its uh, processing the the image and extract feature and to, to evaluate the disease severity. So here I'm, uh, so later I will talk about more detail about the PINI that we use to extract a feature. So, uh, so first we evaluate the uh, impact of attitude on the data uh, quality. So we evaluate a uh, different feature, for example, the canopy area, the percentage of the canopy uh, per pod, uh, uh, GNT uh, green normalized uh, different vegetation index and that is collected from a uh, different attitude. Here uh, we collect from uh, 60 and 90, 90 meters uh, above ground level. As you can see, the significant uh, uh, correlation between image based feature acquired from 60 meter and 90 meter above ground level. So in in this case, um, I mean, in this case, uh, the result, uh, the result uh, suggests that it's flexible to select a different attitude when try to uh, monitor the uh, disease severity. For example, uh, if the farmer uh, have a big, very big view, so it can uh, he, uh, he or she can select a higher attitude to cover more area and to reduce, and reduce the fine time. And on the other hand, we um, very different camera on PC monitoring. Uh, we have a five band multi spectrum camera uh, from uh, which is a red edge, uh, uh, red edge camera from McKesson. We have a um, three band multi spectrum camera that is uh, modified by uh, another company. And we also have a thermal camera from FIA. So here, um, here. Uh, we extract a different feature from the five band multi spectrum camera, including canopy area, green leaf uh, index, and normalized uh, different vegetation index, green normalized uh, green GNTVI, and, and, and so on. And we also have some uh, statistic um, uh, image based feature, such as some of uh, median. Uh, as you can see, uh, we also have a uh, 
create a very good uh, correlation between image-based feature and the ground truth, uh, su such as visual weighting and the yield in most ca case. So we also, uh, I mean, uh, on the other hand, uh, the free bandwidth spectrum and thermal camera, uh, we also extract similar feature such as um, canopy area, mean ca canopy temperature, and standard deviation of canopy temperature. And th there are also significant correlation between the image-based feature and, and, uh, and the ground tool. So in this study, um, the result indicator is feasible to monitor the disease severity and yield using UAB, uh, UAS based remote sensing and different kind of uh, cameras. So monitor, uh, it's possible. Uh, so the result also suggests that uh, it's possible to monitor disease severity in a hyperput and standardized way. So for farmers, uh, they can select the camera based on their uh, specific requirement. So they can use a low cost free band, uh, free band multispectrum camera, or if they are interested in the disease severity or water stress or something like that, they can use the thermal camera. And the uh, I mean, such information. Uh, so, uh, such information of uh, information of uh, disease severity can help farmer to apply the chemical precisely and reduce the usage of uh, chemical. So, if you are interested in this uh, uh, study, please uh, refer to our pub uh, publication. So, uh, that's another uh, study is about the foreign intensity monitoring. So, foreign foreign in foreign intensity. Uh, foreign is uh, a, a, a symbol that is the, the plant is entering the reproductive stage. For, and foreign is a very important uh, crop trait uh, during the plant breeding. So, uh, plant breeder meet, uh, plant breeder select a new cultivar that adapt to the local uh, local climate. For example, uh, in the Pacific Northwest. Um, that in the summer, uh, there's almost no rain. So um, it all depends on the groundwater uh, store from the spring and winter. So the farmer, uh, I mean, the breeder need to uh, select the cultivar that uh, might flower and mature before the uh, hot uh, scorching heat summer. And also um, flowering uh, is related uh, to stress work, uh, widen and maturity and, and also, uh, of, I mean, of, of course, the yield. So in, in this uh, study, we using the remote sensing technology uh, we, to monitor the flower intensity. So um, we, first we compared different, uh, sen different sensor in flower detection and monitoring and identify the impact of spatial resolution on the image-based flowering detection accuracy. We also evaluate different uh, uh, flower detection method. Uh, here we use a uh, unsupervised machine learning technique, and also uh, empirical fresh holding uh, to isolate the flower. So here is the the, uh, the full chart of uh, our research. So we, we have four crops, including can canola, camelina, pea, and chickpea, and we use a two uh, attitude, 15 meter, 30 meter uh, above ground level. Uh, during the uh, UAS uh, data acquisition, we use uh, Canon RGB camera, DJ RGB camera, and free, free band multi spectrum camera to acquire image. So for the for the UA, UAS based, uh, I mean uh, UAS based uh, data, we use a uh, fresh uh, imperial uh, fresh holding to separate the flower area and percentage of flower, and we, I'm not going to talk about the, all the detail about proximal sensing, but I will talk about the uh, unsupervised uh, machine learning for flower separation. And the, first, we compare different uh, sensor, and the result um, uh, vary based on the size of the flower and the color of the flower. Um, so first, um, for, for the large flower, uh, for example, the canola flower and pea flower, um, there's some uh, we, um, we, um, encouraging result. Uh, for example, the canola flower, the free camera uh, demonstrates similar performance. So uh, all of them uh, so uh, reasonable uh, correlation. 
However, when it comes to the P for uh, different, uh, the performance uh, of, from different camera, where we, for example, the, the DJI RGB camera demonstrate uh, moderate to high correlation uh, mid firing, but the uh, multi spectrum camera uh, display high uh, dispersion, uh, dispersion when we uh, examine the data. So, and here is the some, uh, one of the results. Uh, for detection using UAV uh, image. So we can see the power, uh, power the P power from uh, the port. And as for the smaller power, uh, such as Camelina and GP, and the no sensor demonstrate reasonable uh, result uh, at 15 meter or 30 meter above one level. So uh, the second objective, we evaluate the spatial resolution on the power detection. So for the uh, for the winter canola, um, I mean, fire attitude I and mean, up to 30 meter above one level doesn't have a, a significant impact of the accuracy of power detection. For swing and canola and P, uh, as the as the fire attitude increased, the accuracy of the correlation reduced. And also uh, here uh, as another result of uh, power detection using uh, UAS uh, for uh, canola. And so uh, for the small power, uh, spatial, the impact of uh, spatial resolution is more, uh, more dramatically no, uh, as mentioned, there's no meaningful correlation from UAS uh, data. So it is suggested uh, for small power, uh, optimal and very low at, uh, low attitude is, uh, is uh, 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 sensing attitude is suggested. So our results suggest that um, so the ground sensing, the ground sample distance um, of the camera should be at least two to three times smaller than the size of power to, uh, to attain a reasonable result. Uh, the, la the, la uh, the last um, uh, goal of this uh, study is to um, e um, examine the um, unsupervised machine learning for power detection. So we compare the winter canola and uh, P uh, from uh, proximal sensing, um, as you can see from the figure. Unsupervised uh, machine learning or K-mean uh, demonstrate reasonable uh, result. Um, is, um, compared to the uh, empirical, uh, empir uh, empirical uh, fresh hooding. However, for P, uh, there's um, too much noise uh, uh, was class classified as power. As you can see from the figure, artificial object um, such as um, weapon panel and um, pole as, and also soil and leaves are classified as um, uh, soil. So, in general, uh, in general, um, when compared with the empirical uh, fresh hooking, uh, K-mean clustering uh, have some advantages. For example, it doesn't require a sample image, uh, so you can, uh, it's, it's very easy and quick to develop uh, algorithm uh, to separate the file. However, uh, there's some uh, there's some uh, disadvantage. Uh, so it, it takes uh, more time to uh, Classify the power per image. So, um, it, so when um, research using uh, this kind of method, um, it depends on their um, experience and also the the uh, I mean the uh, the, the com computation uh, power. So it, it can uh, choose a method that that uh, it is suitable for their um, requirements. So uh, in, in summary, the, the results show that uh, phenotyping power intensity using, using uh, UAS is also promising. And the results also demonstrate that um, DJ RGB camera is better for detecting power while the uh, Canon RGB uh, multi-spectrum and free band multi-spectrum also show potential uh, potential in detecting the large and distinct power. One of the founding uh, in this study is that the ground sample distance uh, for firing uh, should be at least two to three times smaller than the actual size of the file. So in this study, uh, it is 
uh, it, we saw so that it's um, quantitative and objective foreign detection is possible and also suggesting uh, automatic and frequent acquisition of uh, foreign data is possible. So um, if you want to learn more about this study, please refer to our, our paper. So the, uh, the last uh, case study is about uh, plan high estimation using uh, UAS sensing. So plan high is uh, related to lodging and ECs of harvesting and is related to harvest index, biomass, and new um, cereals, crops, or other um, major crops such as corn, wheat, sorghum that, have, uh, that are high and have higher biomass and are well studied. But for, on the other hand, for cross-season crops such as canola, pea, chickpea, tamalina, which have lower bio, uh, biomass and have different uh, pan architecture, for example, um, for, for example, uh, as you can see from the from the figure, for P, they have a uh, um, modified leaves called tendry. So it's, uh, it's very unique uh, to, to uh, this kind of crop. It may pose a um, challenge uh, during the pan high estimation. And those crops are not well studied uh, in terms of uh, pan high estimation uh, using UAS. So in this study, we Evaluate the feasibility uh, of using remote sensing technology to, uh, to estimate plant height of uh, four cool season crops uh, in the uh, breeding project. So uh, here's a general uh, workflow of uh, our study. So we use uh, DJI Phantom uh, Phantom uh, UAS and and the, the uh, and the DJI RGB camera to acquire image and then we. And uh, speed the image, create a create a crop surface model, and es estimate the plant height. We also collect uh, uh, ground truth data using proximal sensing and uh, manual measurement, and as a reference. Uh, to, as a reference. So in this study, uh, we extract uh, six different uh, plant height feature from the image. For example, uh, maximum plant height, mean plant height. Plan high calculate that using the one one percent toys um, toys um, data point or five percent ten percent twenty percent something like that. So um, first uh, we evaluate the, the um, efficiency of uh, I mean the yeah, the efficiency of the UAS on monitoring the plan high of uh, those um, of, of those uh, co-season crops and. Um, as you can see from the figure, there are significant correlation with, ma uh, with manual measurement and the UAS uh, estimation. So for, for the six uh, plant high feature, we gain a uh, uh, crop and a uh, data acquisition day, we can see a similar correlation with the uh, ground truth. However, when we uh, ex examine the uh, mean uh, uh, square arrow, and those feature uh, differ uh, a little bit. For uh, so for, um, for example, uh, um, plan, uh, plan high, maximum plan high, plan high use, uh, plan high one, uh, plan high five. Um, so lower uh, rooming as square arrow. And in general, uh, as the uh, attitude increase, the rooming as square arrow increase. And another founding uh, in this study is that generally the UAS based uh, remote sensing underestimate the plant height. So uh, we also compare the, uh, the UAS data with the LIDAR data, uh, the LIDAR, which uh, the LIDAR data, which is more uh, comprehensive uh, than the uh, manual measurement to be used as uh, ground truth. So as you can see um, from the uh, from figure, uh, that's, um, Significant and strong correlation um, with, with the with the UAS data. I mean, I'm sorry, the lidar data. And similarly, uh, si similarly, the UAS based uh, remote sensing uh, un underestimate the plant height in most cases. So uh, when using the so it, so to, when using uh, UAS uh, sensing such. Um, uh, I mean, underestimation of plant height should be uh, taken into consideration. 
when you're using the uh, those data. So in general, um, the results suggest that it's feasible, it's, it is feasible to estimate the plant height using uh, plant height of uh, four cool season crop using uh, UAS waste below sensing. Some uh, plan, uh, some image based Im, uh, image based features such as maximum plant height, plant height uh, with one percent one percent of the toys data point, and on five percent of the toys data point at fifteen meter above ground level is uh, are good to use uh, are good uh, for plant height estimation. So our our result also uh, show that. Um, Inference from the uh, architect uh, that there's inference from the plan architecture. For example, um, because the short pan and small lip leaves, um, the 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 accuracy of a pan height estimation for chickpea is uh, lower than other uh, crops. And the unique architecture uh, from the um, the P uh, introduced some um, high higher uh, deviation, uh, higher um, Higher rooming as square error when using the maximum plan high, plan high one, plan high five. So um, the, with this result, it is possible to monitor the plan high more frequently and monitor the loading and bio, uh, biomass yield. So uh, if you were interested in our study, uh, please refer to um, our publication. So uh, in summary, um, uh, for for uh, uh, for um, in summary, um, when using UAS uh, with base with uh, remote sensing, uh, high resolution uh, data is needed uh, for detecting small flower and localized uh, uh, disease or stress symptom at the earliest stage, and also uh, is all, uh, also required for. Um, crops that with lower biomass, such as uh, lentil um, or chickpea. And the U.S. fried uh, environment condition also uh, acquire, uh, affect the data quality. For example, uh, wind, um, it, it can uh, it, uh, introduce uh, image uh, very image fur and make the data, reduce the data quality. So in, in, uh, in Another study from um, my previous lab mate, we also ex examine uh, the solar, con uh, solar, solar con quality and quantity and solar angle on, on, the, on the, uh, the, the impact of uh, those uh, solar angle, solar uh, quantity on, on the vegetation index. So um, di different uh, vegetation index uh, respond differently uh, to those uh, uh, factors. So if you are interested in those, uh, uh, the detail of this study, uh, please refer to uh, the, the publication. So uh, another founding uh, from uh, the, the study is that uh, a right and reference panel is needed for uh, proper radiometric uh, uh, correction. So as you can see, um, the um, reference panel respond differently at different attitude. And if you're interested, uh, please refer to the uh, publication. So here, uh, um, here is the, the case study. So in the next session, uh, I will um, talk about the, the pine that used for all separation and feature ex extraction. But before that, uh, um, I would like to uh, answer a question um, from uh, above section. Any question? Uh yeah, thanks for all of that. We had a few questions about how you can differentiate disease stress from other other stresses such as water stress. So we from both Roberto and Malcolm, there was a question about yeah, how do you how can you tell what you're looking at identifying a specific disease? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, um, for for our study. Um, here we only uh, we, we only have uh, one disease. Uh, we control other factors uh, such as water stress, uh, heat stress, or something like that. So, um, but if we, uh, if we, uh, it's a little bit challenge to uh, differentiate uh, biotic and abiotic stress. So, which require uh, further study. So, uh, I mean, uh, 
here we, we cannot do that now. Okay. And then um, let's see. So the next question came from Malcolm Morrison, which is, are your models for fung fungicide application, are they based on the reduction of the green vegetative index? Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, here we are we are not um, working on that uh, as a step now, which uh, in this uh, study, we only monitor the disease severity. So the uh, fungicide application is, um, is more uh, for the pharma or economic you know, economics. Okay, and then another question I had was um, in the when you're when you're doing measures and and validating the models or validating different sensors, how how often do you consider the you know getting the absolute measurement right the the height the absolute height versus the relative height within a particular flight. So a lot of the, the methods that you presented today, whether it's measuring the height or measuring the reflectance indices, <clears throat> sometimes um, it's useful to have it have uh, relative metrics within a particular flight or day. And sometimes it's useful to have a time series where everything's consistent within a field. And sometimes it's useful to have measurements that are you know, uh, interpretable across Different crops and, and different um, different systems. Yeah. Um, so I think you know. Um, I don't know if I answered this correctly, but um, I think it's it's difficult to use uh, one uniform uh, model to for different crops. So yeah. So this this I mean because uh, the response of different crop and I mean the. the uh, the response of different crop and disease are diff I mean, the, yeah, different. So maybe um, we need to uh, further study to, to uh, better evaluate this kind of model. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I do have a question too. Uh, yes. In the example uh, where you were evaluating the, flo uh, the flowering time or, you know, the, flower, uh, the flowers, uh, oh, yeah. There was a dark box or, you know, a dark shape on the bottom part. So did you prepare some specific, uh, specific, which one? Let me, here we go, uh, go back. See, uh, this, uh, this dark part compared to the soil. This part? Yeah. Go to the next, the, uh, the next slide. No, one, one before, sorry. Yes. See this dark oh. part? Okay. Yeah. Um, I will talk about a little bit more uh, later. Um, so this one is um, the dark part is the target target area. Oh. So, okay. Yeah. I th yeah. I th uh, th this one. Um, I think this one. Uh, one uh, interesting feature of uh, our pine nine. So um, you you can see that that uh, this rectangular is uh, considered as a pod. However, uh, we are not using uh, everything. Uh, from the entire part, we only using the central part. So we we remove the border to reduce the border effect. And you know, uh, sometimes uh, the crop grow uh, from uh, pot A to pot B. So it may have some influence. So we we we, uh, we also remove some uh, plant from the border. So it we reduce the possibility. Uh, remove the possibility of uh, the influence from the, another pot. So here the dark part is the to highlight. Uh, so this one is for, more for color, quality control. So it's highlight for, for user to identify. Okay, this one is the the, the, the feature extract uh, where the feature was extracted. Okay, yeah. So when I saw, I thought that was some kind of you know physical structure that you put in the field to highlight no, the no. flowers compared to the soil. No, okay. no. This yeah, this one is just um, it, it's just, just for quality control. Oh, thank okay. you for thank you for the uh, for the question. Yeah, I, I will. Yeah, I think I will uh, talk more about in the following slide. Perfect. Perfect. Go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Any question? Any more question? I just have one quick question before we move on. Okay. So you were mentioning um, that you had good correlation between higher flight levels and disease in index, and then lower flight levels. So do you think that there's enough data to guide? the 
the like height you would choose to fly over a field at, or do you think that we need to have more research done to know what height you need to fly at to best capture disease data on a given field? Yeah. Um, so for, for for high, I mean, for this high altitude, we can monitor the uh, there's some disease, but if you want more detail, obviously you need to fly lower. I don't know if I answer your question. No, that makes sense. It kind of depends on your target. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, and then uh, I will uh, keep going for the next section. So the uh, the last section is uh, about uh, our pine uh, for pore separation and feature uh, uh, extraction. So after set, setting up the experiment, acquired data, the, one of the most important step is to analyze the image of the data. So uh, you, uh, for the UAS based remote sensing, usually uh, after we collect the image, we need to st stitch them and calibrate the image and create masks to separate the, the black one, uh, such as soil. And, and, and also we need to, uh, especially for the plant breeding, um, uh, we need to separate the pot or grid and extract feature from the uh, from each uh, pot. So, um, for for the um, image stitching, uh, which generate um, of a mosaic image from um, from multiple individual image. So we already have a, a, a couple of very good software such as Open Drone Map, uh, Equisoft, X40 Mapper, and Drone Deploy. So we, we can uh, use uh, this uh, software to stitch the image. However, there's not um, too many pine nights over there uh, for the for user to extract feature from individual breeding port. And so uh, some of the requirement for such a pine night should be user friendly, uh, repeatable and uh, efficient. So to this end, we, we are we are developing, uh, we have we uh, a pineal to extract feature uh, from port, from breeding port. And the pineal was developed in uh, MATLAB. So uh, when you're using this pineal, you need to have MATLAB and some toolbox, uh, uh, such as uh, imaging processing toolbox and status toolbox. So this pineal can uh, handle um, RGB, multi spectrum, thermal uh, image. And as well as uh, data from a digital surface model. Uh, so different pine uh, take care of different uh, data time. So here we, uh, for, for the pine we extract feature uh, such as vegetation index, NDVI, uh, SAVI, uh, NDI, or statistic feature so, uh, such as mean, standard deviation, minimum, maximum, or sum. We also have some uh, morphological features such as canopy area and flower area. So um, if you're interested, uh, please refer to the uh, uh, our public, uh, published um, pine uh, You can have the data, code, and instruction uh, from the website, uh, from the website of Zenote, uh, I think it's here. Um, another feature uh, of this pine is to uh, port separation. So uh, for the pause separation, um, we use a semi-automatic uh, um, method to separate the breeding pot instead of a, um, a automatic machining method. There's two reasons behind that. Uh, first is the diversity of the field. As you can see from the uh, from the figure, so some field are some fields uh, uh, some field have a poor uh, plant establishment. So it, it just have a few plants in uh, in one pot, and some uh, for some uh, some uh, field uh, there's too much uh, too much weed uh, between the uh, aisles, and uh, in some case uh, some breeding pot uh, some row uh, some row pot for breeding has no um, aisles in between pot, and and some another case is that uh, the, the canopy. Uh, the plant grows so well that the canopy uh, close, uh, such as um, those uh, canola. Uh, and another uh, reason we use um, uh, semi-automatic mapper is to uh, interactively uh, uh, to uh, enter input and ins inspect the quality of uh, uh, post separation and, and data uh, extraction. 
So uh, I just uh, I will give a very brief uh, overview of the Pi9 uh, before I go to the demo section. So first, uh, after you input uh, the uh, some uh, information uh, for the Pi9 and the, the Pi9 load uh, load uh, the, the figure, and it will uh, it will uh, it have show up a windows ask you to uh, rotate the image. So the, uh, the the reason is, the reason to rotate the in uh, the image is to to make it easier to, for the part separation. So generally, uh, you, you need to enter the, uh, a degree to let the row uh, uh, to look uh, looks horizontal and the column look uh, vertical. So you can try uh, as many uh, as many times as uh, you want before you you, um, you find a good uh, result. And the second step is to crop the image. So, so uh, cropping the image is to reduce the computation time and make it uh, more efficient. And then uh, we calculate a different feature uh, from the uh, different uh, wave, wave bands such as near uh, uh, infrared, uh, red edge. The next step uh, and one of the one of one of the important steps is to create a mask to separate the, uh, the canopy and uh, from the background. And here again, you can try uh, many times until you get a uh, you, you, uh, you get a uh, reasonable uh, mask. And next, um, uh, we need to identify the few uh, uh, the few of inches. Uh, so here, uh, the user, what the user need to do is to just uh, identify the field at the corner of the field. So here, uh, we, uh, so and then I double click the corner, and then uh, se select the field. So you, uh, when you select the the, the corner, uh, please uh, put uh, pl please uh, consider that uh, the aisles, uh, the vertical aisle, or the horizontal aisle. So make sure. Uh, you, you put uh, the the, uh, the the central point uh, at the in between uh, IOs, so the algorithm can separate the IO uh, between point. So uh, as uh, Philip uh, mentioned um, uh, previously, so here um, uh, the, here we consider uh, the the red rectangle as a pot. However, we are not going to use everything uh, from the, this pot because, uh, as I mentioned, that because the uh, the the border effect and also the inference, uh, the inference of canopy from the, uh, the laboring, the labor part. So here we remove uh, some of the, the border. Um, so you can set uh, off, offset to re reduce those pixels. So only the, the central part uh, will be used to extract feature. So at the end, um, the algorithm uh, uh, automatically separate the pot. Uh, with those uh, information uh, entered by the, the user and then extract the feature. So here is uh, here is the uh, the result of uh, some uh, uh, case um, for this uh, uh, Pi9. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, be uh, discussed before, uh, we use it for DC detection, for monitoring, and also uh, plant high estimation. So we also use um, this Pi9 for some uh, very, uh, some uh, cases uh, such as uh, world plot. As you can see from the uh, from the image, you know, um, there's no uh, IOs um, between plots. So um, this this um, this Pi9 become uh, very handy when uh, it come to such a situation. And if you want to know more about uh, our our Pi9, uh, you can refer to uh, we refer to refer to the website and download the data and try and try it. And then uh, next, I will uh, have a demo to uh, to to uh, to show you how to use it. Uh, before it, uh, is it any questions? Uh, just one quick uh, quickly information. Uh, the link for the pipeline that. Uh, Chen Yang is gonna talk now. It's right here in the description, okay? In in this video, Claire, any question? 
No questions at the moment. I think we're good to keep going with the, the demonstration. Thank you. Okay, that's good. Just a second. Okay, so here uh, I will um, have a quick demo uh, to show you how to use uh, these uh, algorithm, uh, the pipeline. Uh, if you if you in, interesting and uh, you can modify uh, any section of the uh, the pipeline to uh, to adapt to your project um, or specific code. So it, it, this pipeline, uh, as mentioned, it developed in MATLAB and when you use it, uh, when you use it, uh, you need uh, some um, uh, toolbox, such uh, such as uh, imaging processing uh, toolbox and also a uh, statistic uh, toolbox. So uh, another some uh, some uh, suggestion uh, when you're using uh, this pine uh, so be sure labeled uh, be sure labeled uh, individual um, uh, band. In, uh, I mean, sorry, be sure to uh, label the band individually and instead of uh, putting them uh, in a stack image. Uh, okay, so the, uh, it's, uh, this, um, in, in summary, this uh, PINI uh, uh, process the image, uh, calculate the uh, vegetation index and segment the canopy um, and then identify the pod and uh, extract a uh, feature from uh, individual uh, pod. So, uh, so uh, for now, uh, we have uh, some default vegetation uh, in the in the PINI, uh, NDVI, GNDVI, and so on. And if you're interesting, uh, you can add more. Uh, I will talk a little, a little bit more uh, when it comes to that section. So, um, so uh, in this PINI, we have uh, multiple uh, function or script. Uh, but you, do, you don't need to worry about that. Just, just run the main uh, script uh, imaging processing and then it will automatically load other script when it's necessary. And we, we also prepare uh, instruction. Uh, just a second. We also uh, prepare a Word document uh, for more uh, detailed instruction. So you can uh, also uh, refer to this file so it called uh, call, uh, instruction. So it have, uh, I think we have all, uh, give all the detail necessary to use this software. And also we have, uh, we add some uh, screenshot to show you the, the result or some in, uh, information. So uh, yeah, so now uh, let's go, um, go over the code. So when you want to run the, um, when you want to run uh, the code, you can hit um, Control Enter, or you can hit you can okay, you can hit Run, or you can hit uh, Control and Run. So usually, I prefer, uh, I prefer the shortcut uh, Control and Enter. So uh, the first in the first section uh, of the code, it will pop up a window uh, ask for some information. So first is the directory uh, where the uh, where the data is. Just a second. Just a second. Um, okay. And also, it um, so uh, one feature uh, of this code is that uh, uh, is you can save the data or you can just go, uh, go over the uh, uh, the procedure. So which is uh, if you don't want to say the the result, it is save you some time. And also, it will ask you uh, for the refractant, uh, ask for the refractant value of the weapon panel. And then after uh, enter everything, just hit enter. Oh, just a second. Just a second. Sorry, uh, I need to uh, enter the right folder. Just a second. Okay, I think. Okay. 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 Yeah, it's correct. Okay, so and then go to the next section. Uh, we will, we will load the image and do the, some. Oops. Oh. Um, a little bit issue. Um, so the thing is that you cannot you cannot see the other screen. Oh, just a second. 
Okay. Um, so if uh, up, uh, after you run the code, it will show you uh, an image like that, and ask you uh, ask you to to enter a degree to rotate the image. Let me try to run again. So here, uh, sorry, uh, because uh, because uh, let me try to. Um, just a second, let me share the, uh, all the screen so you can see. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, so uh, in this case, uh, every time when you run, uh, it's going to show up a new window, and then yeah. we can see and follow what's going on with the picture. Is that right? Yes. Uh, right. Yes. But the, uh, we have a little bit trouble. Uh, the, um, the, the picture is so in another screen. So. I took a heavier time. <laughs> yeah, let me share all the screen just a second. Okay. Can I share both screen? Um, I think I see. Pro, I, I'm, I'm not sure. Claire, do you know if we can share more screens? I think we have this individual. Yeah. You can yeah. select a window or screen, so you might be able to select the other one, but yeah, it might just be uh, easier to drag things over if it's yeah, uh, uh, being stubborn. The thing is that once once I run the code, uh, there's um, a window pop up and there, uh, there's, um, there's uh, yeah, a we, can, we understand. You you can just share the screen with the code oh. and then just bring, you know, just, show yeah. the image and put back and continue. Okay. It's so okay. can you see uh can you see my um the doc wall document you'll need to share your screen again oh sorry yeah let me do something different um, yeah it's okay yeah it's very cool wow did you work with uh, uh this type of coding before claire i've only done a little bit with matlab but it's it's familiar it's in there <laughs> <laughs> Okay, can you see the screen? Yes, we can see it now. Okay, yes. so yeah, um, okay, so because the, the little bit issue, so let me uh, use um, both the, um, the Word document and the, um, and the MATLAB. So here, after you, uh, you you run the code, you will pop up a window and showing you showing the um, the, the entire view, and then you need to enter uh, a degree you want. You want to um, so you you can rotate the image. So here, let me see. Okay. Okay. After that, uh, it will it will show you uh, it will show you the result and if and ask you if uh, ask you if if it's rotate properly or not. So you you can keep going if you set no uh, en uh, enter n. And here I say yes, so that um, then we will go to the next step. So okay, now it's coming back. So the next step uh, is to select uh, uh, the web fun panel. So uh, it, so um, it have some um, message on the on the title, or if you miss that message, um, just go to the uh, command window. So here you can see all the message here, and um, so select the region that covers the web fun panel. So here, uh, because uh, um, when, during the selection, I cannot um, zoom in and zoom up. So I need to uh, I need to crop the image first, and then. So what the algorithm do is ask me to select a region of interest within the weapon panel for calibration. So let's do it. I select a region in the weapon panel and double click. And then it asks me to the next step to um, to crop the, the field to select all the pot. So after copying, it, you, you see that the, this image is very big, and you know we don't want to uh, waste time and effort on it. So we crop it to in, in, uh, to make it more efficient. So yeah, just uh, just make sure you cover all the, the row and the column. Uh, of your field, and then just select it and double click it. Okay. 
Okay. So after uh, after um, selecting a field, it will it will create um, a register a register uh, or composite RGB uh, RGB image just for, uh, for for the reference, and then it will calculate a different vegetation index, uh, for example, NDVI, GNDVI, and S AVI, something like that. So this one, uh, the user can go over it and check the quality and before uh, proceeding. So this the step of loading, uh, loading the, this the, the, the step of loading image and calculate the vegetation index. Um, as I mentioned before, um, you can add more uh, vegetation index you are interested in or ca calculate some uh, texture feature uh, as you want and add your code here. Um, but one thing, uh, be, sure, be sure after you add your, co add your code here, and you uh, please uh, add the name of the um, index at, the, at, at this section, uh, the name of the image and the, uh, the array uh, of this image. And also you need to change how many uh, image, uh, a vegetation, a vegetation image uh, over there. Be sure to change the number. And then uh, another uh, part is that um, create a mask to separate the, uh, the canopy. So here, um, I see, uh, so another window pop up. So here uh, I use the SV, uh, SAVI uh, soil adjust uh, vegetation index uh, to create a master mask uh, for all the index map. So here uh, the, the, the window is pop uh, is, is so uh, here and you can so you can just uh, use um, use the cursor, go go around the canopy and check you, you check the the, um, the value. So uh, from the lower left corner, you can see the vegetation uh, the vegetation index. So if you want, uh, just uh, click the uh, zoom in icon and then um, zoom in some uh, part of the view and see uh, more detail and and you, you can check. Um, compare different uh, vegetation index um, from the canopy and also the soil. You can see you, from the lower left corner, you can see the, ch uh, the change of the value. And you go, uh, uh, you can go over different part of your field and and just determine the, the minimum, uh, the threshold you want. After, um, after uh, up, uh, when you're ready, just uh, press any key uh, to, uh, to enter uh, the value. So here, uh, after that, uh, uh, the window uh, show up. So let's try for to find, and then the window, uh, the, the resulting mask will pop up. Yeah, just uh, so you can uh, you can check the quality of the mask. Um, is it some uh, part of it missing, or too much soil is uh, included, or something like that? So if you are not uh, you you are. I mean, if the if the mask is not um, good, so you can run this uh, this part of the code again and try to create uh, try try to create um, another mask and try as many as possible uh, until you find a satisfied result. So for for, for the first few time, um, I mean, for you, you need to try uh, multiple time, and after that, you, you have some idea what's the rough, uh, roughly what's the the, fresh, uh, the threshold it is. So after that, uh, um, ready and uh, then we're ready to ex uh, identify the pot and extract the feature. So just um, come to this section and select. select uh, so by the way, you need to select the section. For example, now the, se the section is highlighted. So just hit uh, Control Enter. So if another window will pop up. Um, so you it will ask you. How many row? How many? The number of row in your field and number of column, and also the vertical offset. Um, as I mentioned before, the vertical offset and the horizontal uh, offset. So here, uh, maybe uh, easier um, to understand. So the the vertical offset is green and the horizontal uh, offset is uh, orange. So it, I mean. It it vary it, uh, based on it, the those offset vary uh, based on the file attitude, 
and also the, the port size, also the, um, the, the resolution of the camera. So uh, you need to play around a little bit to figure out uh, the, uh, a good um, offset value for, for your project. And then uh, here we use 20 and 50. And then the- uh, a, a, a quick question. I was wondering what, what the units are of that, of the uh, offset. Thank you. They, uh, uh, that's that's a good question. That is just a pic, uh, the number of pixels. So you can um, uh, you you can uh, go um, you can zoom in and zoom out and look at the uh, the map. For example, uh, at the, uh, for example, at the lower left corner, you can uh, you can put the now uh, now I'm entering the selection mode, so you cannot see any value here. But when you are uh, when you uh, play around the the image you can see uh, you can estimate how many pixels uh, how many pixels you want uh, to use as a uh, offset value so now it's ready to select uh, the, the field so as i mentioned before uh, please be sure include uh, put uh, please be sure um, put the put the um, the corner at the center of the, uh, of the uh, uh, between uh, ios for example, like this, and so I include. Uh, so in this way, uh, part of the IOS will be, uh, will become a part of this port, and part of it will become uh, the neighboring port. So okay, let's see this one, and then select the corner, another corner, another one. And then uh, the program will run. Uh, it depends on your computer uh, sometimes, uh, and also the size of the field. Sometimes it, it takes a, a couple minutes. So just wait, and it will show you a Windows, and you can uh, check the quality of the port separation. So you, you and go around and see if you're happy with those um, the dot. I mean the corner if you select. Let's say I, I'm not happy about this uh, result. So it will pop up another window. So uh, I will select the, the corner of the field again and until I find a, a reasonable result. So let's do it again. So after a couple of uh, practice, you, uh, you, you, you will, uh, you, you will, I mean, after a, a, a couple of practice, you, you will, uh, you, you will uh, get the result faster. Okay. Um, okay, it looks reasonable. So if I say yes. Okay, and then it show me the result. So uh, as, as I mentioned before, so we, we exclude the border uh, of each port. So, and all other, index was calculated from the central part. And then you can go to the you can go to the folder where where the um, the data is storage. So this is the raw data and some of the processing information. So uh, the algorithm so the algorithm will store the um, some information, for example, uh, the, the degree to rotate the corner of the reference panel and the, co uh, the corner of the, um, the corner, of the coordinate of the um, uh, the field and also the threshold you use uh, during the, uh, the, the during the mass uh, creation. So this one will be he uh, helpful when you run the, um, the program again. So uh, in some situation, uh, uh, you want more uh, index or feature from the field. Um, so it, it will save you some time uh, to, instead of running the code, uh, I mean, you need to run the code uh, again, but you don't need to select or uh, you, meet, you don't need to enter. Uh, I mean, you, you know the, you know the, uh, the ideal uh, parameter and you don't need to enter those uh, coordinates. Uh, this feature is uh, really helpful when you identify uh, 
um, road, road port where it's um, very small and it's uh, a little bit challenge to identify. If you if you save those information and next time you want more feature and then you want the code, you don't need to um, go through the process again. And then, um, yeah, in the, in this in this folder you will find a result folder. It 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 see all the all the um, in, in, in the midterm um, image. For example, the RGB image. For this one is uh, for quality control. So it say the uh, composite RGB image. So for example, uh, so uh, okay, this part is a little bit um, uh, sh cloud, uh, shaded by the cloud. So uh, probably I need to remove it. So uh, so with this image, you can identify the port, uh, which port is uh, shaded, and you can remove it. And all the index and also the mask. And so you you can. Um, Check the quality and use those uh, in, uh, during the, uh, the presentation. So uh, I think it's pretty much um, of this uh, pipeline. Um, yeah. So that um, if you have a more question, uh, uh, I'm happy to answer uh, after uh, the last uh, few slide of the presentation. So here. Uh, um, I want to thank all the co uh, especially uh, Dr. Sindhu Sankara and Dr. Uh, uh, Rebecca McGee, uh, Wei Dong, and George uh, during the study. And I also want to uh, thank the funding agency uh, to provide the funding and make this uh, study possible. And also uh, thank uh, my colleague Dr. Ko and uh, Afif and Fan and during the uh, data acquisition. So uh, pretty much this uh, all the uh, presentation, and I'm um, glad to answer any question. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much. That's th that was very uh, informative. Uh, it's, I mean, when we work with uh, UAV pipelines, and then we see how people are doing, we can see the differences and what we can improve in ours. So thank you for sharing your material with us. Sure, sure. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, it's very promising. It's nice to see, like, because some some approaches to um, analyzing drone imaging data can be very much a black box. But it's nice that your MATLAB code is you can see all the different parts and what's happening. Yes. It's a very yes. good resource. Thank you. Yeah, the, the one good thing about um, those uh, my, our pipeline is that it is uh, we already uh, published, and so anyone. Uh, uh, interesting and they can modify uh, as i mentioned they can uh, add more feature and they can uh, they can calculate their own uh, uh, feature for example uh, texture feature if they're interesting in yeah just add to the code and then you can extract more feature awesome uh, i do have a question actually uh when you were selecting the calibration panel uh yes. You need to inform what it is the reflectance from that pixel. I didn't saw if you give this information. Yes, um, it's at the is just a second. So it's at the end of the. Um, so when you enter the when you entering the directory of the data, and also you when you are entering uh, some uh, setting, you need to enter in the reflectance value. Oh, okay. Is uh, okay. Yeah. I see. And what are you using for uh, reflectance panel there? Um, here we are using a very big uh, reflectance panel. It's from uh, it's called Sphere Lab. I think it's called Sphere Lab. It's, I think, yeah, it's um, I think it's one is one foot one foot by one foot. I think it's that one. So we can see from the uh, uh, the aerial image. Uh, is, is it sphere, sphere optics? Yeah, uh, I think it's yeah. Just a second, let me check. Uh, I, for, I forgot the name a little bit. Yeah, something like that. Sphere optic. Yeah. Um, so I had a question about, um, I don't know if, uh, assuming, yeah, uh, 
Yes. You're ready to move on to the next one. I, I was curious a little bit more about the QAQC that you perform. So, um, I mean, you showed us looking at the image and seeing some cloud cover, but I was wondering if there's, um, you know, other other metrics. You know, if I were to take this script, generate those files from my own images, do you have guidance or suggestions for how I might determine, uh, yeah, how I might assess the quality of the images or the quality, you know, how well I can trust the results? Yeah, thank, thank you. That's a very good question. So one suggestion, uh, can you still see my uh, screen? Uh -huh. Yeah, one, um, one very uh, e one easy way, that's why uh, one easy way is to uh, go over different uh, vegetation uh, index map. That's why uh, I say the, uh, those uh, index. So you can see that, um, you know, uh, some, uh, sometimes I feel that NDRE is very good one. So you can see that, obviously there's this, this section, is there's something wrong with this section. Is um, is higher uh, the index is higher than other part, so you can also see uh, NDVI or something. You you obviously there's some this section is not is is different from other uh, section or some other index. Another uh, another way to do that is just look at the look at the raw image. Um, I mean the data. Um, so here uh, you can see that uh, this one is the blue. Um, you, you see a uh, blue and green. I mean, generally, uh, uh, you, you will see those um, location where um, have cloud. So I feel like I've, uh, generally I think NIR is not a, not 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 a good one, but um, and the. And a red edge is a good one, I think. Red edge and red, because uh, they are, uh, I think those, um, you know, those, um, you know, the red, the blue is, uh, the wayland is shorter than the NIR, so it's um, more, subs uh, more susceptible to those, uh, the, ch the change of the light intensity. Yeah, so just look, uh, yeah, so uh, just to answer your question, uh, just go over the, the raw data, and you can see different different part uh, of the field that is uh, shaped by the cloud. And also, you can go to go to those uh, index map. Uh, you, you you will see those uh, different. Okay, so so in, in this example, um, you know, seeing that there's a cloud over in the bottom right of the of the image, how would you handle that? Would you exclude that from analysis or? Um, yes. Yes. So for our, uh, for for us, we just uh, exclude it uh, directly. So it's I mean it's less uh, less argument between. Uh, I, mean, I, I don't um I don't know if there's something to compensate uh, the the light intensity, but we need to check if it's reliable. But removing it is straightforward. So we don't have any argument. It is if this come uh. uh Illumination uh, compensation wall or not? So, so no argument. So just remove it. Yeah. Do you, do you know if those uh, light sensors that we put in above the drone, you know, to capture the intensity of you know radiation that is receiving, right when you take the picture, uh, can correct the the clouds effect? Yeah. Um, yes, I know. Uh, I mean those light sensor. Um, yeah, I, I, we also this one is from my cousin. Uh, we all uh, we also use it, but we still have uh, a little bit shade part. So maybe it maybe change a little. I mean it maybe compensate a little bit. Uh, I, I'm not um, I'm not one hundred percent sure, uh, but probably it cannot compensate um, when it's too extreme like this one. Yeah, here we use uh, this, you know, uh, this light sensor above the drone to try to correct cloud effects. But uh, I never saw, you know, I never compare any any data with, you know, to see if there is how to see how the compensation is, is made. You know, yeah, I was wondering yeah. if anyone here in the group know. You yeah, know. I, I think uh, we need a study for it because you know those breeding part. Um, I mean. The variety is a little bit different. We cannot say, I mean, we cannot tell exactly. The difference is because the cloud of 
is because the, uh, the weak button of different uh, uh, the variety. So yeah, maybe we have uh, we should have a, a study to 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 check if those uh, compensation um, how how they how well they work. Yeah, that's actually a very nice option for a workshop if there is someone watching and know how to do the compensation for clouds or shadows. Contact us <laughs> and share your knowledge with us because we are quite curious to understand. Yeah, that, that's a good topic. Any question? So I have one other question, which is when you're when you're uh, when you look at that field, that example, you have some spots where there's uh, the canopy cover is below uh, 100 percent. So you have some some plots even after you've done the mask. There's so you can see the soil. So when you can compute these um, indices, are, are is the soil part excluded even if it's in so it's inside your plot? But you also have the mask. So do the indices account for uh, the soil, or is the soil masked out? And do you have any yes. suggestions on which way is more informative? Um, yeah, the soil is marked. Um, yeah, I cannot. I don't have a good example here. Yeah, maybe here. Yeah, the soil is. Uh, yeah, the soil is removed. So we we make uh, we interesting. For example, uh, the canopy area is very uh, useful. Uh, for example, when you uh, analyze the DC uh, serology, so for example, the DC can maybe can just kill the plant, and so the entire canopy may be smaller. So uh, it's very interesting to to uh, to know the size of the canopy. So we remove the uh, the soil, only the the green part of the, uh, the canopy. Okay, thanks. Yeah, that's great. Uh, anyone over there watching, type your questions if you have here in the chat. Yeah, um, yeah. You, you have uh, any question about the, the pine eye? Uh, please, uh, you are welcome to email me uh, and ask. Uh, great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Great, guys. Uh, do you have questions, Claire? I think most of my questions have been addressed. It was a very good talk. Awesome. Yeah, I, I wanted to point out, you know, one of the goals of this uh, series is to curate protocols and, and also to curate data sets. And so first I want to, you know, say thanks uh, for making your data available and your protocols available. Uh, I noticed it, so it's on Zenodo, it's got a DOI. We can, we can take those and, and share them with a the broader community use it for testing out other algorithms and such. And so, um, yeah, I think we'll, uh, I'll be in touch about as we go forth with um, with curating these into a, into a common framework. But the fact that we can cite your data, you've made it clearly available with, uh, you know, with conditions of reuse, the CC by. Um, so we, you know, at attribute, attributed source that makes it uh, valuable for, for reuse and, and we'll make, uh, make use of it. So thanks very much for doing that. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, uh, like last week, Athena also has a pipeline and protocol that she have been using, and then we're gonna start sharing these with drone to phenomenon community, right, David? And yeah. uh, of sure, we're gonna contact you again and see about the uh, possibility to put your pipeline with ours there. Uh, that's gonna help a lot of people in our community. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any last words to talk with everyone, Chen Yong? Um, yeah, I think that's it uh, for my presentation. Yeah. I mean, again, if you have any question or interesting in the Pine Eye, yeah, please email email me. All right. In that case, it seems like we're wrapping up for today. Thank you so much, Chen Yong, for your presentation and. Uh, David for coming out and helping us host. If you are interested in more information about drone phenotyping, we're back next Friday. And Philippe is just pulling up the slide for next week's presenter. But yes, yeah, so we'll be back next Friday, same time, same place. <laughs> and we will have a 
So we're presenting alfalfa yield quality prediction using UAV hyperspectral imagery. So moving into hyperspectral data a bit more next week, and it'll be a nice compliment after Chong Yang's presentation today, for sure. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. See you next Thank week. Thank you. Okay. See you. Bye. Goodbye.